Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U Online Instruction. Hi, and uh, welcome to week three, lecture three, Dynamic Atomic Force uh, Microscopy Methods. Uh, this week we've been uh, discussing uh, the use of online simulations uh, on VEDA, the virtual environment for dynamic AFM, for understanding uh, tapping mode. Um, uh, and in the last lecture we had focused on approach curves, how you can use the approach curves tool, the basic approach curves tool, uh, to understand uh, many aspects such as transitions between attractive repulsive regimes, uh, uh, peak forces, and so on. And in the last lecture we had focused on how VEDA is able to reproduce uh, many of the results that are already in the literature regarding the influence that interaction forces have uh, on the uh, oscillators, the amplitude and phase and stability and so on. What we will begin today is um, scanning tapping mode scanning tool. Um, tapping mode or amplitude modulated AFM uh, as we have discussed before, works on the principle of feedback control of the amplitude. The amplitude of the oscillator is regulated. Remember, as you approach a sample, there is a amplitude A far as you're far from the sample. And you, and when you come close to the sample, the amplitude reduces due to the variable and dissipation, as we have talked about it, and due to the combined effect of the uh, variable and dissipation. And then when one scans the sample, uh, going over topography of sample, the base of the cantilever Z is actually moved up and down in order to keep um, the oscillation amplitude constant. So that, uh, that requires a feedback loop and a feedback loop has, uh, has uh, feedback gains that we talked about um, uh, briefly in the last week and also in part one of the class. So when you start using a scanning simulator, um, there are two important additional steps that come in um, uh, in comparison to, um, um, uh, in comparison to uh, the, you know, the simple approach curves tool. So when one does a scanning tool, uh, there, the, here are the additional steps that need to happen. Uh, even for a scanning tool, one needs to, uh, start it off far from a sample, approach the sample, engage with the sample, and then scan. So there's a two-step process, approaching and then scanning over a surface. And since we're talking about scanning over a surface, uh, a scanning tool requires us to uh, create a surface. And uh, as you'll see in VEDA, the way we have uh, created this or, 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 or allowed you to do this is uh, we have something called a substrate and then we have something called a feature sitting in the substrate. And the idea is not to allow any kind of topography and any sort of compositional contrast in your sample, but rather the intent of it is to do a simulation to help explain uh, the contrasts you might get in properties between two different materials or two different features um, on the sample surface. And then, uh, so one of the key things that yeah, we have included is there is a substrate uh, with has certain tip sample interaction properties. You can choose which tip sample interaction model is relevant for your substrate material and what those properties are. And then we have uh, the provision of a feature and the feature can have different tip sample interaction models and different tip sample interaction properties with respect to the tip. Uh, the uh, feature can have different, different um, aspects. It can have different geometric shapes. Uh, we have provided a few different alternative shapes. It can be a step, it can be a trench, it can be a, uh, uh, a semicircular uh, cross-section. Uh, but the key important thing is that uh, the feature need not just be a protruding feature, it can actually be a depression uh, like you might want to do for trenches and or um, uh, AFM scanning of trenches or, uh, uh, or uh, features that are cut into the surface, for example. Um, and the third important thing that was not included in the approach curves is, as I just mentioned, is the notion of having feedback control. So uh, like we did in the contact mode scanning case, uh, there are going to be two uh, key co components of controllers. There's a proportional control and an integral control. Um, both of these are based on uh, doing a feedback um, based on the error signal. The error signal in tapping mode, uh, as we briefly mentioned, is basically the difference between the observed amplitude of the oscillator and the set bond amplitude. And uh, the proportional controller moves the Z distance in a manner that's linearly proportional to the error signal. Uh, however, when you look at the integral controller, the integral controller moves the Z uh, in relation to the integral 
of the accumulated error uh, over the over the past few uh, over over the recent time, let's say, as you're scanning the surface. So we have to worry about two feedback parameters, proportional and integral. And just the way uh, that when we did contact mode scanning in part one, uh, we're going to focus more on the integral controller. Uh, the proportional controller uh, is known to lead to instabilities very quickly uh, as you scan the surface. So we're going to focus much more on the integral uh, part of the controller. So uh, if you go down to uh, tool selection uh, and choose amplitude modulation scanning, uh, we can start this particular example. This example problem is going to be um, scanning along a silicon trench. You're given a tapping mode cantilever, um, spring constant 40 newton per meter, Q factor, there's a natural frequency 350 uh, kilohertz, and the drive frequency is tuned to be exactly at 350 kilohertz. There, the amplitude far from the sample is 30 nanometers, and the rest of the properties are shown to you. And you're asked to do a scan of a silicon surface, which is a silicon substrate, where the feature shown in yellow is a trench 110 nanometers wide on the top, and at the bottom it's about 50 nanometers wide. The depth of the trench is 40 nanometers. And you're asked to scan at a set point ratio of 0 0.9 uh, at 13.3 uh, scan lines per second. So it's a pretty fast, it's about 13 hertz a line is a pretty fast uh, scan speed. Uh, in many cases, uh, uh, you know, you're probably not likely to cross more than 5 hertz a line when you do these kind of things. But for the sake of simulation, uh, we can, to, to, to make the simulation a little faster, we can choose to up the uh, scan speed. Uh, since it's a uniform material, the material in the trench is the same as the material in the background, so the feature properties and the substrate properties are actually identical in this case. And so we use the properties for silicon, so it's a silicon tip on silicon, um, and we can use the DMT uh, interaction model with an adhesion force of 3.2 uh, nanonewtons, and the additional parameters are shown uh, on this slide. The question we want to ask is, uh, what, is, what, is, what would happen to the measured topography of the trench and, and how is it influenced as one changes uh, the integral control gain uh, from 0.0005 to 0 0.002? Uh, in other words, a simple change uh, by a factor of four, uh, how can it uh, change the observed uh, topography of the sample? Now, I do want to emphasize that uh, the numbers for the proportional and integral gain in a VEDA simulation don't have anything to do with the numbers that you would input into your own AFM system. Uh, the reason is that in VEDA, these numbers are the exact numbers that multiply the error signal in the simulations. Uh, however, um, in actual AFM systems, there are all kinds of gains that are uh, in between, so a number of 0 0.002 does not mean much in a real AFM system. Uh, the actual number in a real AFM system could be on a scale from 0 to 100. So, it's, it's, so what we encourage people to do when you're dealing with beta simulations and dealing with the uh, feedback control parameters is to think about the relative ratio. So what we're trying to do in this example is taking a low value of integral controller and increasing it by a factor of four uh, and seeing what ends up happening to the resulting images. So we go to uh, tool choice and uh, uh, select our, um, our scanning tool. And the important thing to note here is, again, if you, if you scan the top uh, row of options, uh, after you have operating conditions, there is actually a, a feature that, that there is an icon connected to feature properties. So you can not only specify the substrate properties, but feature properties can be done separately. And in the feature properties, you can choose a, a trench with negative height. A trench is a, is a feature with negative height. Choose all the properties and parameters in there. When you go through this process and click on the light, uh, on the right, on the simulate button, um, you can scan and it'll take a few It'll take a few seconds, and the result, uh, in, 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 and the resulting answer is going to be displayed in the following fashion. What I've done here is uh, shown the simulations for two values of the um, feedback uh, integral feedback controller. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that the uh, in these simulations the proportional uh, gain is kept fixed at a certain value, 0 0.0005. 
So what one sees here, uh, if you go to the results and sh look at measured topography, this is going to be the topography of the trench as measured by the uh, oscillating probe. Uh, keep in mind that um, the actual topography uh, is going to be slightly, always going to be slightly different from the measured topography by an AFM because AFM, all it's doing is moving the base of the lever up and down uh, in order to keep the amplitude constant. That's what constitutes the topography. Uh, but what you do notice by looking at it carefully is uh, when you zoom in, you actually see that, uh, you know, as the integral gain goes up, the actual topography, uh, the, the measured topography comes closer to the actual topography. Uh, if you go to the results and you can, in the drop down menu, you can also plot the error signal or the amplitude. Remember that this is the quantity that's being regulated in tapping mode AFM. The controller is trying to move to keep the amplitude constant. So uh, this is what in most AFM images uh, in systems is, is plotted as the error signal, error map in tapping mode AFM. And uh, when you plot that, you see something very interesting. You see that uh, in the case when the control integral control gain was kept low at the lowest value 0 0.0005, um, the error signal uh, was large. The amplitude actually increased and was not constant as uh, you were going as you were going over the downward ramp of the uh, uh, of the trench. However, when one hits the bottom flat part of the trench, the error signal is the amplitude is what it should be, and then when one goes up. Uh, the upward part of the ramp, uh, the error signal flips and becomes uh, lower. And you can see that as you increase the uh, integral gain, these error signals are starting to come down. So this is a very instructive uh, example um, of why when one uses different gains, uh, what influence they have, especially when you're dealing with uh, uh, receding features or emerging features with slopes on them, uh, that um, there tends to be always a constant error that you need to try and avoid by changing the gains on the sample. A second example that we want to deal with is an example where we have a step. Uh, this would, uh, for example, mimic uh, a feature which is more viscoelastic sitting on uh, another substrate uh, uh, on, on the background. And here what we're doing is uh, we have a softer cantilever, 0.3 newton per meter, lower Q factor. The uh, natural frequency is uh, 150 kilohertz. And the free amplitude is the same as in the previous case. And uh, the tip radii and the rest of the parameters are shown here. And um, the feature is narrow, it's about 10 nanometers, and the height is just one nanometer. And the tip sample interaction model on the substrate is now going to be different from the feature. In both cases, we're using DMT interactions. However, on the background hard substrate, there is no dissipation. But on the sample, we have now included uh, a viscosity within the DMT model. Uh, and the properties and numbers are shown. So the question we want to ask is, if you were to scan over the step feature, which is more dissipative than the substrate, uh, what do you observe in the resulting topography images uh, at very large gains and at very low uh, uh, integral gains? So uh, in order to do this, uh, one goes through uh, AMS example four. Uh, it's a pre pre uh, preloaded example that you can do, and uh, uh, all these parameters for the feature and uh, substrate are already in there. So pretty much what you need to do is to simply go to uh, the operating conditions and play with uh, and, and try changing the integral and proportional uh, and integral values. In this particular case, we're going to focus on integral gains. And after you adjust the integral gains, you can go ahead and click Simulate on the top right. And when you do it for different integral gains, these are the kind of results that you can display. Uh, on the top left, you see a result at the lowest integral gain, 0 0.002. And you find in red is the actual topography of the sample that was entered. And the blue is the actual measured topography. And so you can see when your integral gain is very small, when you've hit the edge of the object for the first time, there is a whole region where the controller is uh, going through its transients trying to adjust to the changed amplitude, and it takes a little distance before it can actually settle uh, and reduce the amplitude and bring it or bring the amplitude back to the set point value. So this is called an edge effect, controller edge effect. Uh, 
uh, the controller should have responded instantly, but it doesn't. So near sharp features in AFM images is always these transient regions, which you should be careful about because any of the steady state analysis that we discussed in the analytical methods doesn't apply near these edges or places where there are sudden changes in properties uh, on the sample. So if one wants to uh, improve uh, the measured topography, one might be tempted to increase the integral gain. And if the integral gain is increased to 0 0.002, you do find indeed that as soon as you, uh, you, you hit the feature, the, uh, the amplitude responds very fast and uh, the AFM tracks the topography very nicely. And when it comes off the edge, uh, we call that uh, the parachuting effect because the, the tip tends to parachute and takes a little while for it to land back on the flat substrate. And um, uh, what we find is that if one tries to improve um, the ability of the AFM to track the exact surface, uh, if we try to focus on that a little more, uh, we find that if the integral gain increases to 0 0.008, we actually get a controller instability. This was discussed in the contact mode imaging as well. What is happening is that basically the Z controller is overreacting to the changed uh, air signal. So when it first approaches the the uh, when it first approaches the uh, the step, the amplitude decreases and the controller really pulls the base of the cantilever up, uh, overshooting uh, to compensate for that, and then it really pulls it far from a substrate. Uh, making the error signal uh, go the other way, and then it realizes that, and the controller moves back down to compensate for it. And this this uh, action keeps going on, resulting in an oscillatory kind of uh, instability. The same thing happens when you come off uh, the sample and parachute off. So uh, this would suggest a simple study would suggest that uh, you know you probably want to choose a correct value of integral gain somewhere between 0 0.001 and 0 0.008. Uh, so you want to choose the maximum gain possible before you get an instability uh, uh, like shown in the bottom left. And uh, here again, we have displayed uh, all the different uh, error signals uh, as a function of uh, the different integral gains. And what you find is um, the error signal again is the uh, basically the amplitude of oscillation. You find that at very low gains, once you hit the edge of this object, it takes a little while, a little longer for the amplitude to reach its steady value, or the set point value. As the gain increases, it's able to quickly recover its amplitude by moving the base of the cantilever pretty fast. However, if the gain becomes too high, you can see that the error signal uh, becomes unstable, leading to oscillatory kind of uh, behavior near the edges uh, of the sample feature. So with that, uh, uh, you know, I'd like to conclude this little description of uh, VEDA scanning tools, and uh, uh, we will, in the next lecture, continue this discussion on more advanced topics. Thank you.